Hey everybody, this is Mr. Ryan, and this is lesson 4.3 for the ninth grade math summer session. Okay, and what we're going to do here is uh, we just finished learning how to solve quadratic equations. Now we're going to learn a little bit about the graphs of quadratic functions. Okay, and uh, we did learn previously that a quadratic function has, a, when you graph it, it has a shape like a U. It's called a parabola, and you can see it. You can see that right over here. Here's an example. It's like a U shape. It could be upside down if it's negative. It's upside down, but you've already learned that. So we're going to learn a little bit more about this parabola shape and how to graph a quadratic function. Okay. So here are the things that you're going to be asked to do in uh, the lesson sheet for 4.3. Uh, given a graph, so given a graph that looks very similar to this, I'm going to want you to plot what's called the vertex of the graph and identify its coordinates. Now, real quick, the vertex is the point that the turnaround point. It's either the lowest point or the highest point. Uh, if it's a U shape, it's the lowest point. If it's the one that's upside down, it's the highest point. That's the vertex. So this point right here, that's the vertex. We'll get to that in a minute. And then the second thing I'm going to have you do is identify and sketch what's called the axis of symmetry. Now, the axis of symmetry is a line. It's a vertical line that runs through the vertex. If this is the vertex right here, the axis of symmetry is this line right here, this vertical line. Why is it called the axis of symmetry? Well, because a parabola is a mirror image of itself on the left and the right. So if there was a line, you know, if we drew our axis of symmetry vertically here, the left would be would mirror would be a mirror image of the right and the right would be a mirror image of the left and that's why we call it symmetry and it's the axis of symmetry because it is a lo a line that runs through something is often referred to as an axis just like this is the y axis and this is the x axis well this is the axis that creates the line of symmetry for this uh, parabola okay so that's the axis of symmetry and then we're going to write the graph's function. I'm going to show you how to write the equation of this particular function in what's called vertex form. Vertex form, in my opinion, is probably the easiest of all of the forms of a quadratic graph. Now what we're going to do is we're going to, because it's a symmetric graph, we're going to plot three pairs of symmetric points. A pair of points means two points. So three pairs means three twos. That means six points altogether. Okay. And we're going to identify the coordinates of all six points. Okay. All right. So let's start with, uh, well, you know, before we start, I want to talk about this vertex form. Okay. I'm just going to give you a real simple understanding of how to write vertex form. Vertex form looks like this. Okay. You will write, you can write y equals, or you can write f of x equals. Uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do f of x because it's a function. f of x is equals. And what it's going to be is it's going to be, it's going to have a set of parentheses, and then there's going to be an x here. And you're either going to have a plus or a minus in here. So I'm going to go ahead and put a plus here and a minus. And then there's a square. And then outside, you're either going to have a plus or a minus. And then there's going to be a number right here. And there's going to be a number right here. And so I'll tell you how, you know, how to do that. Okay. Basically, if I were to tell you that the vertex, let me just give you a few examples. If I told you that the vertex was at like nine and, um, I don't know, seven, if the vertex of the function was at, at the point nine, seven. Okay. And now remember, we're going to identify the coordinates of the vertex up here in question one. So you are going to know the, the coordinates of the vertex. And we're going to get it right off the graph. It's that point right there. Okay. Let's say for the sake of argument, this is not 9, 7. Okay. I'm making, you know, I'm making this 9, 7 up. This is just an example. Okay. If 9, 7 were the vertex. Okay. And if it was an upward, if it was a, an upward parabola. Okay, then this would be our function. It would be f of x is equal to parenthesis x minus the 9 squared and then plus the 7. Okay, and so it's 
it's if this number is positive, then it becomes minus 9. And the reason for that is if we plug the 9 in for the x, 9 minus 9 equals 0. And that's how we determine. It's the 0 solution of whatever is inside here. This becomes the 0 solution of whatever is in here. So now it's x minus 9. And then we put a square on it. If this is a positive 7, we write plus 7. If this was a negative 6, we would write minus 6. Okay? All right, so that's just an example. Maybe we could do just a couple more examples since this is all we're really doing uh, for today's lesson. We've got a little bit of time. All right, let's say, let's say that the coordinates of the vertex were negative 4 and negative 12. Let's say that that's the vertex. Well, then the vertex form would go like this. f of x is equal to x plus 4, because we do the opposite sign of the x-coordinate, squared, and then we do the same si sign of the y, minus 12, okay? And it's that simple, okay? We just put reverse the sign of the x and put it here, take this exactly as it is, and put it here, and we put a square on the x plus 4. Now, this is assuming, this one in particular is assuming that it's an upward parabola, okay? What if this was a, um, a downward parabola? Well, how would that change? Well, we need to know that. Let's say that the vertex was negative 4, negative 12, and it was a downward, okay? Remember, downward means that it's negative, right? Well, <laughs> that's going to explain everything, because look, now it's going to become f of x is equal to, we're going to do the exact same thing, we're going to do the exact same thing, but we're going to put a negative in front of it. It's going to become negative x plus 4 squared minus 12. It's the exact same thing, only we're going to put a negative in front of it. Why? Because it's a negative parabola. Okay? It really is that simple. I'm not trying to, I'm not trying to, you know, make it difficult or anything. Let's try one more example here, and then I think you'll get the picture. Uh, let's say, um, let's say that it's, it's a negative parabola, and let's say that the vertex is at um, oh, 26 and negative 43. Let's say that the, the vertex is at 26, negative 43, and it's a negative parabola. Well, then... What we're going to do is it's going to be oops, it's going to be f of x is equal to negative because it's a negative parabola x minus 26 squared minus 43. Okay, and then we're done. That's it. That's the vertex form of the uh, of the graph. Okay, of the function. That's the vertex form of the function. Okay. All right. So let's jump right in here now that we've. Got a little bit of preview on what we're supposed to do. Uh, this is going to be, I'm, I'm hoping this is going to be pretty easy for us to do. Um, I think, I'll tell you what I'm going to do is I'm going to change the color here a little bit. I'm going to switch to maybe something a little blue, bluer. Let's go with this purple here. Okay, great. All right, let's see what we got here. So the first thing says, here's our graph. Now we're, now we're going to go to this particular graph. And it says, plot the vertex and identify its coordinates. Well, let's plot the vertex. Well, to plot the vertex, all we have to do is go to the picture and put a dot at the vertex. Bam! We're done. Done with that. Now we need to know, well, what are the coordinates of that point? Well, this is 1, this is 2, this is 3, this is 4. Okay, so that looks like it's a 4. Okay, good. And then going down, we're going to go down to 1, uh, sorry, this is negative 1, negative 2, negative 3, negative 4, negative 5, negative 6, negative 7. Okay, so it looks like the coordinates of this vertex are 4 and negative 7. All right, so 4, positive 4, and negative 7. I'm actually going to write that over here. I'm going to write that the vertex is at 4, comma, negative 7. Okay. All right, and now uh, let's go ahead and the next thing we're going to do is we're going to identify and sketch the axis of symmetry. Okay, well, this is really easy. 
The axis of symmetry, very simply, is x equals the x-coordinate of the vertex. And so, to identify it, we're just going to write x equals 4. When we say x equals 4, whenever we say x equals, that's the definition of a vertical line. Okay? And so, for example, here, if we were to go to negative 1, negative 2, negative 3, negative 4, negative 5, negative 6, if we were to draw an, a vertical line right here, so if I were to draw a vertical line here at negative 5, okay, just like that, then that vertical line would be called, that line would be called x equals negative 5. So the x equals negative 5 line is the vertical line at negative 5. So here's, right, here's 0, negative 1, negative 2, negative 3, negative 4, and then negative 5. Okay, and so the vertical line at negative 5 is um, x equals negative 5. Okay, all right, so what we're doing here is we're making a vertical line. This axis of symmetry is a vertical line. And so, uh, and where is it? Where is the vertical line at x equals, or at uh, the axis of symmetry? Well, here it is. Is this vertical line right here at 4? And therefore, the axis of symmetry. And the way we draw it, we typically draw it with a dashed line. So we're going to draw this dashed line vertically like this, okay? And um, that dashed vertical line is uh, the axis of symmetry. And as you can see, we've called it x equals 4. So identify x equals 4. Where do we get that 4 from? We got it from the, the x coordinate of the vertex. And we just wrote x equals and then this number and then we sketch the axis of symmetry. We go to the to the vertex and we and we sketch a vertical dashed line right through the vertex. That is the axis of symmetry. Okay. All right. And then what we're going to do is we're now going to write the graph's function in vertex form. Okay. Well, we already did that previously. We're going to say that it's f of x is equal to. Now, uh, this this is a positive curve. This is a positive quadratic curve. Therefore, we're not going to put a negative in front. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and write it as parenthesis x. Remember, we want to put the x coordinate here. We're going to this is a this is a positive four right here. So we're going to put minus four. So x minus four squared, and then whatever the y coordinate is, that's what we're going to put minus seven. And so the vertex form of this parabola is f of x equals parenthesis x minus 4 quantity squared minus 7. Okay, that's the vertex form. We're almost done. And now uh, we're going to plot three pairs of symmetric points and then identify their coordinates. What's, what are symmetric points? Well, let me give you an example. Watch this. I can go to any point on this parabola right here. There's a point right there. And then if I go over to the axis of symmetry, one, two, three, I have to go exactly sideways. I'll then go one, two, three, the other direction, and now I have a mirror point. That is a symmetric point. So this point right here and this point are symmetric points. So I just plotted one pair of symmetric points. Let me show you another pair. Typically, you'll have one near the, uh, near the vertex right here. There's one right there, okay? And then I'll go one unit over to the axis of symmetry, then one unit over in the other direction, and there's another, another point right there. And you can usually find another one if you travel along the curve until you get to um, sort of an intersection point on the grid. There's one right there. And then we'll go over one, two, and then one, two, and there's another one. So we just plotted three pairs of symmetric points, okay? Now we just need to identify the coordinates, okay? Let's start with these two down here. Uh, this one is at 1, 2, 3, okay, 3, and then negative 1, negative 2, negative 3, negative 4, negative 5, negative 6. So 3, negative 6. So we're going to say one of the points is at 3, comma, negative 6, okay? And, all right, the other one is right over here. It's also negative 6. But instead of 3, it's 4, 5. Okay, so 5 and negative 6. Okay. 
Now, a neat thing about these symmetric points is they will have the same y value. They will always have the same y value. Okay, that's cool. And the other thing is their x value will always be the same distance away from the axis of symmetry. 3 is one unit away from 4, and 5 is also one unit away from 4, and that makes them symmetric points. Okay. All right, this one right here is at 1, 2, and negative 1, negative 2, negative 3. So 2 and negative 3. All right, and the other one is at, well, 2 is 2 units away from 4. So we now have to go two units the other way away from four. That's six. Four plus two is six. Well, let's make sure. Four, five, six, and then negative one, negative two, negative three. There's the other point. Six, negative three. Six, comma. That's not a negative right there. Ignore that. Negative three. And look, same y coordinate. And the two is two units away from four, and the six is two units away from four. Last ones. Okay. And here, here. Okay, so this one right here, this point right here is from here, so going from the origin, 1 and 2. 1 and 2. Okay. 1, comma, 2. So that means this one must have a height of 2 also, right? And it go, it's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, and 2. 7 and 2, okay? And sure enough, 1 is 3 units away from 4, and 7 is also 3 units away from 4. So 1, 2, 1, 2, and 7, 2 are symmetric points. And that's everything that you have to do for this lesson. I think we should do a couple more examples. All right, here's another example. If you want to, you can, um, you can try, and, uh, try and do this one on your own. Uh, here's a new graph. Note that it is a negative quadratic curve. Uh, so why don't you pause it and see if you, how many of these four questions you can answer. All right, so now I'm going to do it. We're going to plot the vertex and identify the coordinates of the vertex. Well, the vertex is the turnaround point. It's right there. And that is at negative 1, negative 2, negative 3, negative 4, negative 5. And then going up, positive 1, positive 2. So it's at negative 5, comma, 2. Okay. I've plotted it. I've identified it. Now I want to identify and sketch the axis of symmetry. X equals negative 5. And at the vertex, I'm going to draw, just sort of sketch a dashed vertical line. That's the axis of symmetry. Oops. There go. Okay, great. Now write the graph's function in vertex form. F of X equals, now it's upside down, so I'm going to put a negative then a parenthesis, then x, and then I want to do the opposite, the opposite of negative 5, which is plus 5. So I'm going to do x plus 5, then close parenthesis, then squared. Then I'm going to do the same sign as this 2. That's a positive 2. So I'm going to put a plus 2, okay? And this is the vertex form. f of x is equal to negative quantity x plus 5 squared plus 2. Lastly, I'm going to plot three pairs of symmetric points and identify their coordinates. Okay, well, I'm going to go along the curve here, and here's, a, here's an intersection, so I'm going to put a point there. Then I'm going to go sideways. Just all i got to do is sideways over till I hit the curve again. Bam! Then I'm going to travel along the curve again, and then here, here's one right here. And then I'm going to go keep going sideways until I hit the curve again over there. There's two symmetric points. Travel along the curve again. Bam! and then travel sideways until I hit the curve again. There we go. I've just plotted three points, okay? Negative 1, negative 2, negative 3, negative 4, and positive 1. Negative 4, positive 1, and positive 1. And then this is negative 4 here, negative 5, negative 6. So this is negative 6 and 1. Okay? Then this point right here is at uh, negative 1, negative 2, negative 3. Uh, and then I'm going to go down to negative 1, negative 2. So negative 3, negative 2. Negative 3, negative 2. And the other one I know is going to have a y-coordinate of negative 2. Let's find out what the x-coordinate is. 
All right, negative 1, negative 2, negative 3, negative 4, negative, negative 5, negative 6. It's at negative 7. There it is. And sure enough, negative 1, negative 2, negative 7, and negative 2. Notice, well, that won't always happen, but notice we went here from negative 4 to negative 3, and here we went from negative 6 to negative 7. Okay? All right, the last pair right here is going to be at negative 1, negative 2, and then going down, negative 1, negative 2, negative 3, negative 4, negative 5, negative 6, negative 7. So I've got a negative 2, comma, negative 7, and the other one is at, I know it's going to be negative 7, here it is, negative, this point is negative 7, and then how far over it is, for, is it from the x-axis? Well, it's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So we've got negative 8 and negative 7. And that's it for this one, okay? Let's just try one more example. Okay, let's see, we got this one here. Do you want to pause this one and try and figure it out? Look at this graph and answer these four questions. All right, I'm going to go ahead and do it. We're going to plot the vertex. The vertex is right here, okay? We want to identify its coordinates. Well, we're going to go negative 1, uh, negative 2, negative 3, negative 4, negative 5, negative 6, and then negative 1, negative 2, negative 3. All right, so it's negative 6, negative 3. So coordinates are at negative 6, negative 3. Identify the axis of symmetry. The axis of symmetry is x equals negative 6 because it's the same x coordinate, or it's, just, it's x equals the x coordinate. And then the axis of symmetry is going to pass right through the vertex. So we're just going to draw a, a vertical dash line right through the vertex here. Here's the axis of symmetry. All right, that's easy enough. Then we're going to write the graph's function in vertex form. Well, this is a positive curve. Okay, it's up, it's turned upward, it's like this, and therefore it's a positive curve. So it's not going to have a negative. So we're going to go f of x is equal to no negative. We're just going to start with a parenthesis, x. And look, the, the x coordinate is negative 6. We need the opposite of negative 6 is plus 6. So we'll put x plus 6, close parenthesis, squared. And then the y coordinate is negative three, so we're gonna we're not doing the opposite of the y. We're just gonna put a minus three. Put a minus three, okay. And so that is the vertex form of the function. Last thing we're gonna do is plot the three pairs of symmetric points. Okay, so from the vertex we're gonna go along the curve, and here's a point right here. Then go sideways until we get to the curve again. Then travel along the curve until we hit another intersection point go sideways until we hit the curve again. Then travel along the curve again until we hit another point, intersection point, sideways until we hit the curve again, and there we go. We have six pairs, okay? And uh, I'll go ahead and stop now, but basically all you have to do is identify the coordinates of these three pairs, and you're done. That is all you're doing for, for lesson 4.3, is you're, you're just learning how to read and translate a quadratic graph into a quadratic function identifying its important quality.